This is using the accelerometers of the iPod. We're going to measure the acceleration of a vehicle uh, up to 35 miles an hour and then brake to a full stop. We'll be using the iPod and some software that we've written and an old truck. Uh, you notice, if you can see, the bottom here is the z-axis and it's at minus 1g approximately. And the y-axis is the one that we're actually interested in most. It's at the top of the iPod and that's pointing in the direction of our acceleration. So I'm going to get started here. I'm going to pull out as soon as the road's clear, seems to be, and accelerate up to 35 miles an hour, which is the legal speed limit here. So let me start the iPod. So we're gathering data now. I'll pull out on the street. There's the street. There's the speedometer. And here we go. So up to 35 miles an hour, and then I'm going to stop it completely. Nobody's behind of me, so we'll come to a full stop. Nobody's behind of me still, and we'll do it again. Let's go. So up to 35 miles an hour, and then another full stop. Well, maybe a little more than 35 miles an hour. So at this point, we should have some data, and we'll look at it together. We collect acceleration data whenever we press start and what it first does is zero itself out. It calibrates so that all the different axes are at zero. And you'll notice here the y-axis is the one that we're interested in. And it should go positive here as I accelerate. And you see that the old truck can still get up to about uh, 0.25 or so g. Uh, the others remain basically uh, just noise factor. There's some bouncing in the road. We don't have very good roads around here. And you'll see the z-axis, which is the uh, up and down direction of the, the vehicle. And you'll see also a deceleration as I hit the brakes. So that's what this particular experiment did, was to, uh, again, collect data on the uh, x, y, z axes. The Y is the one that's most interesting to us, so since that's acceleration, deceleration. Uh, next, we'll look at the actual plots of, to show us what it looks like. Looking at the plot of the data, we can see better how the acceleration actually and deceleration actually was uh, performed. We see a up, a down, another up, and then another down. The up, of course, is on the Y axis where we were accelerating. The down is where we saw the braking occurring. So we had two accelerations, two decelerations, and those were nicely recorded on the plot. Okay. Here we've used our acceleration app to measure the uh, takeoff of a commercial airline. You can see that we're running down the runway there at about 1G, so a little bouncing. And then uh, at about 1625 seconds into the recording, uh, there's a sudden jump up to uh, 1.3G. We hang around there for about 100 seconds, and then gradually the acceleration tapers off as we reach uh, a climbing speed. SignalScope is an app that allows you to use your iPhone as an oscilloscope. And here I've got it connected to a frequency generator. We're set at about 3000 Hertz. You can expand the uh, view by using a uh, pinch and squeeze with your fingers. Um, here I've got about 3000 Hertz. Now I'm going to uh, change the frequency. Um, we're going to go up to 6000 Hertz and uh, go back and look at the picture and that's what 6000 Hertz it's just a simple sine wave I'm now going back from 6000 back to 3000 and you can see that the sine wave spreads back out you can also change and do a, a Fourier transform on the signal so here's the signal at about 3000 Hertz you can see the spike there at 3000 and uh, now I'm shifting the frequency up to about 8000 Hertz um, so 
uh, you can see that the peak shifts over to 8,000, so we're at 8,000 hertz on the generator. And um, uh, now I'm going to shift it back to 3,000. Uh, you need a special probe to do this, uh, which can uh, be purchased separately from uh, a company in Germany. The magnet meter uh, is not only a compass that points north and south, but it also gives you the dip angle, the direction that the magnetic field points into the Earth. You'll notice the arrow here points slightly to the left and down into the ground as I rotate the iPhone around. Now I'm going to take the iPhone horizontal and then uh, over my head, and you'll notice that the magnetic field still points uh, it downwards and slightly to the left. North is to the left. And, um, but the magnetic field not only points north, it also points down into the ground. You'll notice that the um, reading is around 62 uh, microteslas. That's, uh, that's about what the magnetic field is at this location. Temperature using an iPod and a thermistor circuit. We're going to collect some temperature data using a thermistor, an iPod with an application we've written, and some boiling water, and a circuit that connects to the thermistor and the iPod headset port. Now to begin, we need to calibrate the thermistor circuit and you see it's about 27 or so centigrade and we're using a cooking thermometer in this case one that's external to calibrate the thermistor circuit with so it's within a few tenths of a centigrade close enough and what we'll do in order to collect the data we'll start record and it's collecting the data from the temperature and I'm going to put it into, hope this works out well, uh, the boiling water. And we should see a corresponding increase in the temperature. It won't be exactly 100 centigrade, but pretty, pretty close to it. And it's enough of that. So now let's look at the data and see what we actually got. We can plot it. And you notice here the uh, temperature is now decreasing as it cools. By plotting the data, we can see how the temperature changes over time, something you can't do very well with just a simple thermometer. What we're going to do here is to move through changing the time of that we're looking at the uh, data. And we can see different times. We can stretch it out, pan around, and look at different times that we've collected the data. And what I'm going to try to do is to find where you actually hit the maximum. And notice it is pretty close to 100 centigrade, which is what we would expect. The circuit itself is fairly simple. This is just a picture of it, of course. If we look at the actual circuit, we see that its connection to the iPod is pretty simple. The X sensor is an app that gives you the X, Y, and Z components of the Earth's magnetic field and the, the compass heading. You'll notice I start out with the Y component. That's the top end of the, of the iPhone pointing north, giving it about 15 or 16 microteslas. And uh, the Z component into the ground is negative 45 microteslas. I'm now rotating the iPhone so that the X and Y positions are swapping. And then um, we're going to end up with the Y position pointing south at about minus 16, minus 17 microteslas. Now I'm going to keep rotating back around until the Y component is, uh, the Y end of the iPhone is pointing north again, and you see it's come back 
to about 16 microteslas, and the Z component is still negative 45. If I now pick up the iPhone and rotate it to the top end towards me to where the um, bottom of the iPhone points north, what we'll see is that the component uh, of into the ground, which is 45, negative 45 Teslas, is now in the negative y direction uh, relative to the iPhone. And the, um, what was the z component is now, is now pointing uh, north. And now uh, we've rotated back to where it's horizontal again, and the z component into the ground is 45 microteslas, and the y component's back to 16 or 17 microteslas. Oscope is an app that will let you see the waveform and the fast Fourier transform of a note. Here you can see the waveform. Sorry, the guitar is not completely in tune. Now I'm going to switch on the Fourier transform and I'll whistle first. And you can see that the, um, there's many frequencies in the guitar, whereas the whistle only has one frequency.